Welcome to another episode of Reboot with Dr. R.C. Marin. We are changing it up a little bit. Today, I have my co-host, Dr. Divya Marin, and we are going to deep dive into a really critical issue, a silent killer, which is the high blood pressure. You've been in practice for more than a decade. You're a triple board certified internal, in internal medicine, general cardiology, and interventional cardiology. I'm so excited to dive into this, the silent killer, also known as high blood pressure. So, yes. Why don't, we, why don't you start by telling us why high blood pressure is referred to as a silent killer? Uh, high blood pressure is called a silent killer because people don't feel their blood pressure. And so they ignore it for most of the time. And by the time they feel it, it kind of is, becomes a very deadly complication. So that's why it is called a silent killer. That's quite alarming. Let's start by understanding exactly what high blood pressure is. What is hypertension? Well, before that, let's talk about what is blood pressure. Blood pressure is the force at which the blood travels through the blood vessels from the heart. Okay, And you have a systolic blood pressure, which is the top number, and the diastolic blood pressure, which is the bottom number. And both of them have to be in sync in general. Normal blood pressure is like 120 over uh, 80 millimeters of mercury. And anything above 180 millimeters is severe blood pressure. Uh, but a blood pressure more than 130 millimeters of mercury is considered high blood pressure. Could you explain more on why these numbers are so important? Yes. These numbers are very important because it indicates how hard the body is working and what force it's working. Think of it as like a bodybuilder lifting weights. The higher the blood pressure, the harder the body is working. And if it's consistently high for a long time, it's going to cause damage to the other rest of the organs. So that's why it's important to maintain your blood pressure. What causes high blood pressure? <laughs> That's a, a very broad question because there are a lot of factors. Number one, genetics. Uh, if your parents, uh, uncles, aunts had high blood pressure, you are going to be more prone to have high blood pressure. Next is age. The older you get, the higher the chances of getting. Then lifestyle factors, you know, lack of exercise, being overweight, consuming too much alcohol, tobacco abuse, stress as a cause for blood pressure, right? There's a study which came out in Nature Genetics in 2021, which identified more than 1,000 genetic variants associated with blood pressure. Kind of highlights you how much of it is inherited itself. Can you fix hypertension with um, lifestyle changes? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, the first line of treatment for high blood pressure is lifestyle change. And uh, the multiple lifestyle changes can be made. The number one is changing what you eat, okay? Redu uh, weight reduction, because with every kilogram or a 2.2 pound uh, decrease in weight, the blood pressure reduces by 1 to 2 millimeters. So if you have 10 kg weight loss, your blood pressure can go from 130, which is in the high blood pressure range, to 120 with normal blood pressure range. So maintaining your weight is extremely important. So when you talk about lifestyle modification, American Heart Association has a whole list of them. Number one, maintaining a healthy weight. Number two, adopting regular physical activity. Number three, diet. There's even a diet called the DASH diet. We'll deep dive in it in a little bit more. Then some people are very salt sensitive and the salt intake itself can change their blood pressure as well. Then alcohol consumption, limiting it or completely avoiding it quitting smoking and as I said managing stress is such an important factor in man uh, in controlling your blood pressure. That is very encouraging to hear. Is there one thing that stands out in particular? Well all these changes are important but if I have to pick one the, I'd say maintaining a healthy weight is most crucial. Losing weight can have a dramatic effect on blood pressure. A landmark study which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2013 found that for every kilogram or 2.2 pounds of weight loss, you can decrease the blood pressure by one millimeter. So that even small changes can give rise to modest improvements in blood pressure. That's impressive. Now, speaking about diet, could you tell us more about the DASH diet? <laughs> okay. Like, 
DASH diet. It basically stands for diet, dietary approaches to stop hypertension. It's a dietary pattern recommended by the U.S. National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute uh, to prevent and also to control blood pressure. It's basically eating fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, uh, reducing ultra-processed food, reducing extra sugar intake, avoiding red meat, avoiding alcohol consumption. But uh, in the study, the nutrition study, if you follow the diet, you can reduce your blood pressure by 3 to 11 millimeters. And that can cause a 7% reduction in the coronary heart or heart attack risk and about 11% risk of reduction in stroke. Well, that's fascinating. You mentioned sodium limitation. What's the latest on salt and hypertension? Well, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship between salt and hypertension. There are definitely salt-sensitive individuals who, if consume uh, salt or high amounts of salt, will get high blood pressure. But then recently, uh, there was another study, once again from the New England Journal of Medicine in 2021, found that the relationship is not as linear as we thought. So we will have to personalize it and individualize it. In general, the American Heart Association recommends 2 grams or 1.5 to 2 grams of salt intake per day. That does not mean you don't put any salt at all. Just avoid the added salts, the ultra-processed foods, which are extremely high in salt. That's really interesting. Now let's talk about exercise. How does it affect blood pressure? Well, exercise is a powerful tool in managing blood pressure. Regular exercise strengthens your heart, allows the pump to, uh, blood to pump more efficiently. It also keeps the blood vessels pliable and therefore reduces the resistance against which the blood has to flow. With regular exercise, you can drop your blood pressure up to 10 millimeters of mercury. We recommend 150 minutes of aerobic activity throughout the week and um, strength training at least two to three times a week. That's great information. Now, despite our best efforts with lifestyle changes, some medication is necessary. Could you give us an overview of the most common medications for hypertension? Absolutely, absolutely. There are several classes of medications. The most common is the diuretics. The diuretics is basically they eliminate extra sodium and extra water. They are usually the first line of medication uh, for high blood pressure followed by ACE inhibitors or ARBs. These work by relaxing the blood vessels and also adjusting the hormonal productions around the kidney itself and therefore helps um, reduce blood pressure. Then you have calcium channel blockers, which prevents the calcium from entering the body and causing relaxation of blood vessels. Then finally, beta blockers, which slows the heart rate and also opens up the blood vessels and causes reduction in blood pressure. In a study of uh, Journal of General Internal Medicine, the biggest problem is 45% of patients with the diagnosis of high blood pressure are not compliant with their medications. And, you know, that's an issue. Thank you for that overview. I've heard about a new treatment called renal denervation. De de Can you tell us more about that? Yes, it's, uh, it's actually a brand new uh, thing which has just come out. Uh, in 2022, Lancet published a study on renal denervation. Basically, we are trying to cut off the nerve supply of the kidneys. It's an invasive procedure. We pass a catheter through the groin get into the blood vessels of the kidneys, give radio frequency ablations or ultrasound energy, either modify or reduce the nervous output uh, from the kidney blood vessel. It gives a very good reduction in blood pressure. Um, but it is right now associated or kept for patients who have very uncontrolled blood pressure despite being on three medications. They also should have a normal kidney function for us to be doing this. And there are secondary causes of blood pressure. That is, patients have hormonal issues, etc., causing high blood pressure. They shouldn't have that. So there are definitely a checklist we interventionalists uh, kind of go through. But I think it will. Uh, we will learn more and more about it. Definitely not the first line of therapy for high blood pressure. The first line is still lifestyle modifications as I talked about. That's fascinating. Now let's talk about blood pressure monitoring. When should people start checking their blood pressure and how often? 
Um, okay. The American Heart Association recommends all adults above the age of 20 years should get their blood pressure checked once every two years if it is normal. Of course, if the blood pressure is higher, then your doctor is going to kind of adjust it accordingly. But monitoring, even home monitoring of blood pressure is extremely helpful. This is a person who does not have a diagnosis of high blood pressure. If they have diagnosis of high blood pressure, then monitoring it at least three times a week is essential. What about blood pressure numbers? What, what's considered ideal and when should someone be concerned? And when should they panic? Let's go over all that. In general, blood pressures less than 120 over 80. 120 over 80 is your perfect number, right? If it is less than 120, you are the normal range. If you are 120 to 129, well, you are kind of in the pre-hypertension range. Uh, 130 and above is the stage 1 hypertension. 140 and above is stage 2 hypertension. If you have blood pressures above 180 millimeters of mercury, it's time to go to the emergency room because it can lead to hypertensive crises. That's crucial information. Now, you mentioned earlier that hypertension affects various organs. Could you elaborate more on that? Yes. So, you know, blood flows through all over our body. So, if the each organ is uh, re receiving its blood at high pressure, then it's going to have, affect you head to toe. So, in case of the heart, it can cause heart attacks because it's the heart can uh, the pressure is too much for the heart to pump against, and you can get actual muscle damage. It can cause heart failure. Uh, not only the contraction of the heart, but it can also increase the stiffness of the heart. We have talked about it with uh, Dr. Sheldon Letwin about diastolic dysfunction related to blood pressure. When it comes to the brain, it can cause stroke. Not only hemorrhagic stroke where you bleed in the brain, but can cause clots in the brain. And then you have teeny tiny blood vessels in the brain that can literally get ruptured. It can cause aneurysms uh, and rupture of aneurysms also. And now the kidneys, the kidneys definitely get affected by high blood pressure. Number two cause of kidney failure in the world is high blood pressure. Apart from that, it can also can cause blockages to the blood vessels of the legs and you know so it affects head to toe like uh, there's not a single organ which is immune from the effects of high blood pressure now can you share the story that we can all relate to actually uh, it's a very good story this is a family member or he's as close as a family member uh, he was diagnosed with high blood pressure but like 45 percent of the population took his blood pressure medications for a few weeks and checked his blood pressure. His blood pressure was normal. He said, hey, I'm cured of blood pressure. Let me stop taking my medicines and stopped taking his medicines for several weeks to months and did not keep checking his blood pressure. So did not know where his blood pressure was. Came to work one day, felt very uncomfortable. I uh, And he could not describe the discomfort. He said, my belly, my chest, I'm just not feeling comfortable. He was rushed to the emergency room. His blood pressure was 220 over 140. The normal is 120 over 80. So it was twice the normal. It was double the normal. And it put so much pressure in his heart. His heart failed. His lungs filled up with fluid. His heart rate dropped. They had to revive him back. He had to be on the breathing tube. Two different medications were given uh, to bring the blood pressure down. And he had a three to four day hospital stay uh, to normalize it. Uh, now he has understood the effects of what could happen to him because as I said he went into cardiac arrest two or three times now is compliant changed his lifestyle um, taking his medicine making sure his blood pressure is in the 120s thank you for sharing that powerful story it really highlights the importance of taking hypertension seriously speaking of medical compliance could you elaborate on why medical compliance is so crucial? I think as I reflected in the story, it is important for you to be compliant with your medication. If you are not compliant, then and you're taking medicines 
all your medicines one day and you don't take them the other day, then you're causing rapid fluctuations in your blood pressure, which can be even worse for organs, especially the brain and can lead to stroke. So just for that sake, compliance is extremely important. And, you know, sometimes if you don't take your medicines for three or four days, then you take all your medications, you can get a rebound effect and boom, your blood pressure drops and then you pass out and then you get effects of low blood pressure. So, you know, so it's, it's, it can work in both ways. Uh, patients who have consistently taking their blood pressure medications and controlling it, they have a 38% lower risk of heart attacks and strokes compared with those who are, you know, irregularly taking. So compliance is key here. That's compelling evidence for the importance of medication compliance. As we wrap up, are there any other important aspects of hypertension that you'd like to discuss? I think we talk, we haven't talked about stress management. You know, I think I, I've repeated this in previous podcasts that adequate stress management in the form of mindfulness practice is extremely important. Numerous studies have come even in nature and a meta-analysis in the current hypertension reports in 2021 found that mindfulness-based interventions can significantly reduce blood pressure. Next, sleep. You need good quality sleep. You, If you have obstructive sleep apnea, you need to treat that. And that makes a big difference also in controlling your blood pressure. Alcohol. There is no amount of alcohol which is safe for us and chronic use of alcohol can lead to blood pressure and smoking cessation. Stop smoking. If you are smoking, quit smoking. Don't start smoking. Don't start vaping. Vaping is no way healthier than smoking. Vaping is as bad as smoking. So please do not um, kind of indulge in all these behaviors. And, you know, it's not a one thing you can do and fix everything. It is being mindful about your brain, mindful about your diet, mindful about your exercise, mindful about your sleep. All of that put together keeps your blood pressure happy. Thank you so much for this comprehensive overview of hypertension. Do you have any final words for our listeners? Well, I think I'm going to say be mindful, be informed don't ignore your health. I thank you all for joining me with this episode of Reboot with Dr. Arasi Marin. We talked about various different things. Dr. Divya Marin was kind enough to be my co-host so that I can talk about hypertension. Once again, this is general medical advice. I am not giving any personal one-on-one medical opinions. Please consult with your medical care provider for further information. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for listening. If you found us valuable, you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of your favorite podcast app. And also, please consider leaving us a rating or a review as that helps others find the podcast too. I hope you have a great week ahead.